Welcome to this episode of Morning Report Emergency Medicine. I'm Alec Weir. This is the case of flesh-eating bacteria. I, I think they called it flesh-eating bacteria to sound more flashy, you know. This case came to me from one of our second years, Dr. Ian Bodford. Thank you for this. A 46-year-old female with diabetes and high blood pressure, fibromyalgia, presents with an abscess to her right groin. She reports that it busted this past Sunday and blood came out. The pain has been increasing since then, and the side note is a smidge non-compliant with my insulin. Here are her vitals. Her temperature is 37.3, heart rate of 99, blood pressure of 137 over 77, breathing 18 times a minute, setting 97% on room air. On exam, she's got a 1 by 1 centimeter open wound to the folds of the labia majora in the right thigh, right in that inner trigenous area with active drainage. 5 centimeters of induration, but no crepitus. But they were concerned for a deeper infection. It looked like cellulitis with a little opening. She's an uncontrolled obese diabetic. Let's take a look at her CT scan. You can see here all of this air in the soft tissue. Our initial opening that you can see on physical exam is right here. But there's all that extra air all in this deep tissue. The radiology read overnight, the resident read, inflammatory changes with foci of air tracking within right labial fold concerning for infectious process. There may be due to recent iatrogenic manipulation with emphysematous organism not fully excluded. Additional inflammatory changes are seen within the surrounding subcutaneous fat. No discrete fluid collection seen. Staph overread, there is air, and this is neck fasci. Necrotizing fasciitis, this is the worst of the soft tissue infections. The overlying skin initially may not be involved. That's the scary part. Mortality rate pushes 20%. It may appear like simple cellulitis. Eventually the skin will turn violaceous or purple and echematic and then crepitous. Those Rice Krispie treats under the skin. The Lernac score, what is that? Isn't that a Dr. Seuss character, the Lernac? This is the laboratory risk indicator for necrotizing fasciitis. It takes into account the CRP, the white blood cell count, the hemoglobin, the sodium, the creatinine, and the glucose. This helps to risk stratify patients with cellulitis for the risk of necrotizing fasciitis. Greater than six strongly prompts further evaluation for possible neck fasci. Positive predictive value of 92%, negative predictive value of 96%, but there is a lack of external validation for this score. The treatment for neck fasci, Vank, Zosin, or something to cover MRSA, and then a beta-lactam, and then you want to add Clinda. Clindamycin helps to decrease toxin production from Staph aureus and Strep pyogenes. Surgical debridement, the key to treatment. There's talk of hyperbarics, but hyperbarics, if you have those at your shop, should not delay surgical debridement. The take-home points, the diagnosis of neck fasci, high clinical suspicion as always, because initially the skin that you see when you do your exam may not be involved. It may look like simple cellulitis, or you may have those echematic changes or that crepitus. Keep that Lernac score in the back of your head to help decide, you know what, I'm a little on the fence, is this cellulitis? What's the risk for neck fasci in this patient? And then your treatments, antibiotics, surgery, and hyperbarics. As always, you can follow me on Twitter at Weir underscore Alec or subscribe to this channel for more updates from Morning Report Emergency Medicine.